Good morning, everyone. Today we will be doing a uh, having a journey to presentation. My moderator is Dr. Veena. Today. No, no, Today we will be discussing about a pilot study that was done in our own department, the safety and efficacy of continuous theta burst in sensitive stimulation in acute phase bipolar depression pilot exploratory study done by uh, Dr. Gunjan Malik, Dr. Preeti Mishra, Dr. Shobhitkar, Dr. Dhyani, Dr. Uh, Krishna, uh, Dr. Priya Tyar. The article was published in the journal of uh, ECT. The editor of the journal is Dr. Vaughan Nicol. The impact factor of the journal is 3.692 and it was published on the 7th of July 2022. The bipolar disorder is a chronic recurrent, often disabling mood disorder affecting 1 to 3 percent of the population. In bipolar disorder, depression has predominant polarity and is associated with marked impairment in social and occupational functioning and an increased risk of suicide. Repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation is one of uh, the non-invasive and safe neuromodulatory agents, which has shown to be efficacious in unipolar depression. Repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation can non-invasively modulate specific brain regions to dissipate depression. The aim was to study the effect of novel continuous theta burst uh, stimulation targeting the right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex in a randomized, rater, blinded, placebo control design methodology. The inclusion criteria was that uh, patients or subjects were within the age range of 18 to 59 years, a written informed consent was taken from the subjects. Patients uh, meeting the diagnostic criteria for bipolar affective disorder, current episode depression, moderate to severe using the diagnostic criteria uh, of ICD-10 uh, subjects with at least um, The exclusion criteria was uh, another comorbid psychiatric disorder. Diagnosis of mental and behavioral disorder due to the use of psychoactive substances, harmful use or independence pattern, except for nicotine and caffeine. History suggestive of brain injury or surgery, any significant brain malformation, neoplasm, or a neurodegenerative disorder. Then history of seizures and a history of ECT being given within the past six months, pacemakers or other metal parts in the body. The patients were randomly allocated using block randomization method to the active and sham groups. 30 patients were screened, 19 enrolled for treatment. Uh, two patients dropped out of the study, one in the active group and one in the sham group, as one lacked improvement and one was lost to follow up. So therein, 17 patients in total completed the study. All patients were uh, in patients, they underwent regular physical examination, routine laboratory studies, and an ECG. Usually, the patients were treated on an outpatient basis for two weeks, during which continuous theta burst stimulation sessions were delivered. The follow-up assessments were done on outpatient visits. Patients were required to continue the psychotropic medication at the same dosage for the entire duration of the trial. None of
none of the patients were provided with any kind of psychotherapy. The stimulation parameter, a Mag Venture Mag 2 R30 device with Theta Burst Booster and B65 coils was used in the delivery. The standardized international 10 to 20 EEG system was used for positioning the coil as it accounts for variability in participant skull size and is consistently used in clinical applications. The prefrontal cortex was the preferred stimulation site and the coil was centered over the right DLPSC. The F4 here was the site of stimulation. Both groups received a total of 15 theta burst stimulation sessions, three sessions per day, each spaced half an hour apart five days in a week. The active group consisted of a burst of three pulses delivered at 50 hertz, which was repeated every 200 milliseconds for a total of 600 pulses and lasted uh, 40 seconds. A total of 1800 pulses were delivered per day. Then clinical measures in this study, severity of depression was measured using the HAMD and Beck's depression inventory. The concomitant anxiety symptoms were assessed by Hamilton anxiety rating scale. The effect of treatment on quality of life and sexual functioning was assessed by WHO's abbreviated quality of life assessment and changes in sexual functioning questionnaire. The blinding procedure. Subjects were rated at baseline the seventh day and the 21st day. They were rated on clinical measures by an independent rater who was blind to randomization of the groups into active and sham group. The patients were sequentially and randomly assigned to the two groups using blocks of random number sequences and the numbers were written in a sealed opaque envelopes. For each patient, the envelope was opened immediately before the commencement of the first session by the clinician who was administering the theta burst stimulation. The patients were also blind to the arm of treatment. Retrospectively, the rater was made to guess the treatment arm for the study participants based on their pre and post uh, psychopathological scores. The guess matrix result in a Cohen Kappa coefficient of negative uh, 0 0.015, which implied no agreement and therefore indicated good integrity of the blind. The integrity of participant blinding to treatment arms, although could not be asserted. Statistical analysis was uh, done. The study was uh, the study data was analyzed using SPSS version 28. The primary variables were the HAMD and the Bex depression inventory scores. The secondary variables were the HAM, the WHO's quality of life scale, and uh, the changes in sexual functioning questionnaire. The assumption of normality was verified by normal probability plots and Kolmogorov Smirnov test. Uh, group differences for sample characteristics were examined with an independent t test and chi square test wherever it was applicable. No major adverse effects were reported. Two patients, one from active and one from sham, they reported of headaches during the first few sessions, but they responded to analgesics. None of the patients were reportedly discontinued because of the adverse effects. Now the results, the two groups except for the marital status were comparable in terms of sex, habitat, social economic status, employment status and education. Both the active and sham group subjects had comparable proportion of positive family history, suicidal thoughts and proportion of psychotropic intake. Moreover, age, duration of index episode, number of past manic episodes and depressive episodes did not reveal any significant difference between the two groups. Then another assessment was done based on time, wherein A we took as the pre-treatment, B at the seventh day, and C two weeks after the theta burst stimulation. Here we can see uh, at baseline, all of the variables, the active and sham group, all of them have the, almost the same value. So group comparison of uh, variables, like I previously mentioned, was done at A, the pre-treatment phase, at seventh day and 21st day. Across the, two, uh, across the two groups on intention to treat analysis. At the baseline, all variables were comparable for both active and sham group. Analysis showed no significant group time effect for any of the variables. As can be seen from, the, uh, as can be seen from this table, that even on the seventh day, uh, the Bex depression inventory, the, uh, the mean in the active and sham group is almost the same as well as on the 21st day, similarly for other variables as well. 
Now the discussion, the current study is the sole randomized control trial sequentially targeting the right DLPSC with continuous theta burst stimulation and acute phase bipolar depression. It was found that continuous theta burst stimulation has shown statistically significant improvement in acute phase bipolar depression across three weeks. The benefits were not better than the placebo control. In this study, intensive protocol was chosen, which delivered 15 sessions in five days. That is three sessions per day were given. This intensive protocol was used to shorten the total trial duration. Then 1,800 pulses were delivered per, uh, per day rather than the conventional due to the dose effect seen in studies. Uh, that is by increasing the number of continuous theta burst stimulation stimuli, the therapeutic effect was accentuated. Then antidepressant treatment and bipolar depression carry an augmented risk of treatment emergent mood switch with neurostimulation, although not with adequate mood stabilization and when used short term. Case reports have also suggested that this can induce hypomania or mania, although none of the patients in this study had an induced treatment emergent effective switch. Talking about the limitations of this study, uh, the, duration, uh, the duration of follow-up was short. It was two weeks. The sample size was uh, also small, which was about 17 patients only uh, were able to continue up till the end of the study. Then use of a scalp-based localization technique rather than neuro-navigation, uh, which could have been used to target a specific cortical site. Then also continued antidepressant use throughout the trial could have been the reason for the effects that were seen in the patient. This brings me to the end of my uh, presentation. Making more references. <laughs> Presenter, you have done this study. You have done your analysis of all the papers. Uh, this study ultimately the results were a little inconclusive due to the small sample size, and only 17 patients were able to continue till the end of the study. So, a larger, uh, uh, in order to have like uh, Good results, we need to have a larger sample size and also. Antidepressants, then depression goes, the moment will flare up, which will be comparison in, compared to active group, so we will not find any significant difference. Yeah, so, uh, also, the methodology, random block method was used uh, for the randomization. So, that would uh, 
that could also lead to a lot of confounders and specific selection bias. For example, like in case of some in the random block studies, it has been seen that selection bias is one of the backdrop uh, drawbacks of the. If it is a block, if someone using random number, it's some backdrop. Yeah, it's forming numbers. So, what kind of bias will come? Why we did this was the first study which our department, Dr. one of the seniors did, and it was a randomization study. So he used to come and ask us, sir, is this million? Is it 10 million or is it 2 million? So it used to be our bias, na? He, acha nahi nahi. Is it come or is it active group? We used to feel, you know, patient is symptomatic enough, and the patients, when they come symptom, they used to tell them, ki nahi, symptom is less. Ask me for, is it million? Let's go. So in order to remove this, we, uh, this randomization predetermined number sequence was designed. For example, age could have been a confounding factor in this. Like, it took 18 to 59 years of age. So, as the older age will be, the more exposed they will be. More exposed. I mean, exposure and outcome will be, so they will be related in the sense that exposure, uh, they, uh, I mean, they already have a sedentary lifestyle. And in the age was significantly different in both of the groups. That is, okay. randomization, you have to see if there was any significant difference in any of the various groups. That was there in the group. Okay. Right. There was a social demographic table in the diet. Right. It was a question we have here. Food is valid, but we have neutralized it. In results, you can see it has a table there. So, people are made this one only. So, so you have to read in between lines if you are making this observation that you have to pack it up with the age is not significant. Can say from this data in the active group, age is 43 years plus minus 12. Okay, and in the sham group, it is 34 plus minus 10. Okay, mean the age mm -hmm. is not comparable. So, if we look into more detail, like if uh, patients or some patients may be in the extreme of age. And one or two patients could have influenced. Okay, so that could be, you know, building the discussion or say one of the reasons. So that kind of analysis. The mean is comparable, but uh, uh, the dispersion is more in the active group. Okay, so that means that uh, 43 plus minus 12, that means 22 people were about 50, maybe 55. Whereas in this group there will be the there will be more, more uh, closely grouped the sham group around the say age of 35. Okay. So maybe that is why we did not see the such that significant improvement in the active group. Even if the differences not significant, but the difference here, extra values, this will build up. And this is a problem with this very less. Small size studies. This question will be what is your, if you say, to observation of significant observation? General plan actually is not for the presenter also. I think there are yes. what people have read. Uh, what are your observations? Sir, I have another observation about the methodology. Uh, sir, as you can see, page number two. Uh, so, in the last paragraph, 
the first line uh, there is written that all patients were inpatient. Wherein in the third line, when it is written that the outpatient basis, ke, uh, they were followed up. So it, that was a printing. All Yes, Tanya, you read the study. What do you find? Any, anything that you can carry for your research? What you can see is returns bias. Because we are not very clear, we are not clearly put up the full rate. So, ideally, this thing, ideally, you know, this presentation would help your juniors, Dr. Ayushi and Dr. Sarkar. So, preferably, Dr. Ayushi and Dr. Sarkar, don't rate your patients, rate other, you know, the other, other patients. You can read Dr. Aishi's patient. She can read your patient. Otherwise, you'll have bias. You will know that you know, this is an active book. So, rating, uh, rating scores can be uh, can be affected by the bias. So, ideally, it should be. Preferably, do this. So, you be more authentic to this patient. Or ask uh, any of the senior agents you know, who are actually trained. Ideally, so someone is in pain and the reading skill should be read. So I think sir should read on the SL should be read. CGI definitely has a shorter duration. So whether they are handy for this, the CGI is very easy to that way. So rating we could have said, though we try to rule out that bias by retrospectively asking this, but we should have clearly pointed out here that who rated it. If the person who is delivering our team is rated, definitely biased. Because that person will know this group of mm -hmm. We have the protocols to be active. The will be blinded to the group. This group is in the area. The medications should be continued throughout the procedure, the trial procedure. Yes, that is because it's an awkward issue. Have we analyzed the medication? No, no. This is an Osaka study. It was written in medication delivery. So, is something should be continued on the regular treatment? No, it's already written. It will continue on the psychotropic medication, same basis for the entire duration of the trial. So, maybe this can have a bias. It was supposedly one week before medication was changed. Then, whether that has made a difference or the acting is related. So that can be done. So this is more of a common sense. Indeed, and you can think and then you can put up. So this can be a limitation of this. If you add up my location and your system is not adequate, so what should happen? Yeah, we could have refined it. There are there are ways. So we can refine this. Match try to match these two groups of patients to the one. Although you're applying to the two patients that can be if one of such is good is you choose some variable for the patient or antidepressant. I think one good this group and the other one go to this group. You don't know what to use to that area. What are the various types of like me? Pharmacy students. Inter interns. Types of like I think you must have read in your community. Study this way. Other types of like me. The patient is blinded, so the single blind. If the evaluator is rating, you know, the scale is blinded, it doesn't blind. And the administration of the setup or the funder who is funding the study 
investigator, so a person is blinded, then so it becomes like everything is in a blinded process, and we send the data to a third person, like into another industry, and get them divided. That kind of a thing becomes the problem. Okay, so this is the So 
that, that is what this 17 patients data is specifically shows. Not that treatment is ineffective, other conditions might be a reason for it. Again, the same because it's pilot studies that is So the other other uh, learning that you can do is that if you have similar indications and you do a pilot study for a novel indication, so you have chances of research being published before. And the thing is that if we have this becomes a safe protocol or it becomes more, uh, it is comes out that this intervention is effective. Every time when you are somebody publishes your article, will be posted in discussion. If I could take it, this is the last two of this partial. This partial. And both sides. Partial. Partial eta square. It's an effect sense. So, what is an effect sense? Anyone? Pharmacy students? So, the sense of the thing is. What is the main difference over? So, effect says. Standardized mean difference is So basically, you take a mean difference and then you standardize it by some bit on it. Then it becomes an effect size. So there are various kinds of effect sites. Cones, G is there, cones D is there, it is G is there, partially eta square. Spaces generates partially eta square, that is why we call partially eta square. This uh, must be used to uh, incorporate these discussions on the protocol for small, small things. And I think by next Tuesday, handle the protocol. I think sometimes that um, that could be shared in articles on how to do a journey study because we must just how to do a journey. How to do a journey study we can take a class maybe one of the time to a journey club. So you can go one which class for analysis. How to do a journey study. I think you can also take it. What I would say is this for one club instead of one presenter. As for the three two student apart, so that you know, it's a general club. In general club, the presenter is not the main; he's more of a moderator. So he will critically analyze, but it is everybody has to pitch. So, including the faculty, he will also. That is why I ask that uh, you should give the general advice so that all the faculty can read and come with their comments. Okay. So that you know how to, the main purpose of general club is now. Who are all doing research? Okay, is to how to read a paper, how to how to how to take its finding, evaluate it, and how to incorporate in your clinical practice and in your research. In a practice, also you need to well, they will uh, so being being critical. I agree. So being critical is very important in in science when we are doing science. So, for example, a patient who was who couldn't walk. When we went for the rounds, and it was done from the neurology side that patient is having a seizure. Ultimately, it turned out to have a fracture spine. We were very critical of it. Not that if someone has made an observation and then you take it for granted. Need to say, you know, go into the information with an attitude of criticism. 
even if established facts are there, always challenge look critic critically see those. Journal club is one of those. One of them. We need not see that. This article means this. Who said this? Read, bola. So that becomes an gospel truth. We have to see that whether it was conducted properly or not. What kind of journal it is published. See any study where there are like uh, conflict of interest, financial disclosures. We didn't get any financial disclosure. Financial disclosures means funded study. They might be motivated. Yeah. If you study those particular study, okay. if you study critically, then you'll find many of the farmers sponsored study. They tweak the methodology in a manner that their molecule will be benefited. So you will be able to find out what they have done actually. They will tweak like make it uh, some antipsychotic or antipsychotic drug. They think that their molecule does not have weight gain, so they will compare it with other drugs. Other drugs are better though, and if they think that it is like uh, yeah, so they will so they will compare it to another drug. Yes, so that way they they do do uh, that uh, dosage etc. So you can read into that. Yeah, I, I think the study it is. Uh, I don't know uh, whether we should take our own studies for uh, general health because as a rule we should what we should do we should present our papers. This is for the community, but uh, whenever it is published, I think we should uh, what we do we can have a if somebody publishes a paper, so based on the protocol presentation, we do or any thesis presentation we do and some most of the papers are from thesis, but if anybody. Publishes a paper. I think we can present the paper and have a analysis of all the studies. That is, that will help us all. Okay. And uh, main purpose of journal clubs too is better if we take studies from. So that will because uh, we are blind to many things because uh, we have done it. So the main reason for errors creeping into uh, articles is that we know many things. So because we know many things. We presume that it is in that. For example, that simple inpatient outpatient. That is such a you can say uh, error that is because we know that it, it, it. So we did not look for it. That any case may inpatient only be covered. That is it. So these kind of errors because you have a lot of data and you write an article. There are uh, limitations to how many words you can use in most of the journal. So you edit out the information at many times. You miss out on things. So explanations why what happened. Here we know most of the things by we did what we did. Right. Okay, but uh, what we have came to me a few days back. General cycle is citing lack of preparation. So I said, why not present something which we have done? Yes, we will particularly look into it. And looking at the presentation, she did well. At the presentation, we uh, there is a feeling of incompleteness. We would have done well with that. Yeah, that is always there. That is always there, and that is always there as a you can say uh, author also. And ultimately, when you submit, you still have a feeling of incompleteness when you submit the article, and it is yeah, but it's not a finished article. I think one or two versions more edited than that one. So maybe you would have removed that. I don't remember, but this is an uh, incomplete version. Which you have two or three versions after that have gone to them for corrections. Thank you. <laughs>